provide metaphysical research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school is a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold class in the United States, Canada, and various other foreign countries. The local Hamilton, Ontario branch was established in the year 1968. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you our facilitator, Dr. Lionel Van Manju of Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Praise Joshua. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit as they're contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the Word. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by the title God. And the true name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 85 that there are Lord's many and there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabets that could produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. So, therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. This cloud is drawn all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive him in his pure spirit state, he took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without actual flesh and blood. This form can be seen in divine visions and understood by divine revelations. Later on, the self same spirit manifests in a physical body and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of Egypt, he called Moses, a top model Sinai, and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. He later instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round the mouth. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern, and absolutely, in, oh, I'm sorry, and in the school we show proof how that 
absolutely nothing escapes this pattern. Can I skip something? It operates according to structure. It's absolutely everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The school has ten primary constitutional aims and objectives. They are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose operating throughout eternity to this present day. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the dragon, the devil, or Satan and his demons operating in the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the dragon, the devil, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. I'm sorry, I'm messing up. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Intent is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of a moral glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. We now have a class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Benjamin Lattimore, which will be followed by our scripture lesson, which is uh, Exodus, the 17th chapter, which if that could be read by Patty Deslin in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There we go. There we go. And I think Daryl is going to put up a song. Just oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. May we all bow our hearts and minds and thank Yahweh and Yahshua that we're all allowed to be here for another week and that people that can't go to their usual classes have the option to come here and still learn the gospel with brethren in real time and not have to be sidelined in lack of better terms, which it's always wonderful to hear the gospel preached, no matter who's preaching it, especially whenever it's correct. And I love it whenever new people come to the class and Yahweh brings people in that have either been coming to class for years and years or it's their first one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
plans You made me see the truth at last How are the heavens and the earth are all the Dr. Kinley's vision showed me the way, but I was blind, now I see that it's not a My new favorite song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was beautiful. Good morning, beautiful brethren. I will be reading Exodus chapter 17 from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. Revised by A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association, and printed by Yoshua Promotions. Exodus, the 17th chapter. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin. After their journeys, according to the commandment of Yahweh, and pitched in Rephidim, Rep hide them, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore, the people did contend with Moses, and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why contend with me? Wherefore do ye tempt Yahweh? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured, murmured against Moses, and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us out of Egypt to kill us our, and our children and our ca cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto Yahweh, saying, 
What shall I do unto these people? They be almost ready to stone me. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod, where, wherewith thou uh, smotest the river, take in thy hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there among the rock in Horbid, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he came, and he called the name of the place Masha and Rabbah, because of the contending of the children of Israel, because they tempted Yahweh, saying, Is Yahweh among us or not? Then came Amalek, and fought with Israel, and ripped him. <laughs> and Moses said unto Joshua, Joshua, I'm sorry, but it's Joshua, okay. Choose us out and go, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Elhim in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up, stayed up his hands, the one on the other side, and the other side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Yahweh Nissi. For he said, Because Yahweh has sworn on his throne that Yahweh will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. That was Exodus, the 17th chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for uh, reading that, Patty. And thanks, Ben, for your prayer. And thanks for uh, Daryl and Kathy for sharing the beautiful song. Thanks for all of us and Nick the moder for doing the moderation. It's always a pleasure to get together. I just want to do a quick hospitality. Thank I'd like to thank uh, brethren who uh, joined us from the Bahamas, from uh, Zambia, Canada and uh, United States. We've got rep folks here from uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, New York, New Mexico, and the great state of Texas. There you go. <laughs> um, anyway, with that, we're probably going to have uh, three minimum, possibly four speakers this morning. So if I can call upon our first speaker this morning, uh, Dr. Patrice Williams from Michigan, if you're able to give a testimony. Greeting, brethren. I'll just be brief. And my testimony, my brief testimony, is to assert and attest that I have learned something of divine truth and reality about our Savior and Creator. I have learned that He is not in the sky. I have learned that He walks among men. I have learned that. He is present and operating his purpose. And I learned that as a result of coming to this school. And this school teaches by a divine pattern. And that pattern is an explanation of what our creator is. And it is threefold, reflecting that Yahweh, the creator, is threefold, that he is Father word and holy spirit furthermore i have learned that 
the one whom the world calls Jesus Christ, that that is not his name. I have learned that he did many, many works according to the law and the prophecy. In the law, I learned as a result of this coming to this school is the first five books of the Bible and the testimony is the remaining 34 books of the Bible, making up a volume. And throughout that volume, there were many, many incidents that are recorded that Yahshua fulfilled all of them in order to make us one with him, fulfilling that law and placing his law or his heart or mind within us that we might be one with him in our hearts. Also, I have learned at this school that there are, that the, the essence and the existence of the creator can be proven, not only according to the pattern of the tabernacle, which I just mentioned, but according to the scriptures as well. Not only that, but the universe. I hope I'm not going too fast. I'm kind of excited. I ask that you bear with me. Um, You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> this is an exciting um body of knowledge to to become exposed to. And why is that? Because it can help us in our practical application of it in our everyday lives that we acknowledge him and seek him to lead and to guide us according to things that please him, according to the mystery of righteousness. So with those things, I will say that I'm grateful for what I learned. I'm grateful for who was sent to teach. And with those few words, I'll uh, just say I'm ever so thankful and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your testimony, Patrice. Always uh, love when you can uh, contribute and share with us. So your presence, uh, you certainly matter in the body of Joshua. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to call, call upon our next speaker this morning, uh, Dr. Sybil Lewis from Bahamas, if you're able. If you can unmute Sybil, that'd be great. Can you hear me? Absolutely, you sound great. Good morning and greetings in the name of Yahshua, Messiah. I'm grateful, as the first speaker said, I'm grateful to be here at this class this morning. And I'm thankful to Yahshua for everything. Uh, as a saying goes, the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> I'm thankful and grateful because it could have been, uh, I'm, we are truly blessed to be under the sound of uh, this teaching. And the last time I was at this class, I heard a speaker uh, talking about it, Ruth, the Moabitess. And I, I always enjoy uh reading about Ruth because it tells a story and it's a story of redemption and we know that Yah Yahweh has sent his son Yahshua the Messiah to redeem our souls back to Yahweh there is a document that Dr. Terry Welch wrote called the redemption in the book of Ruth. And I don't know if anyone here have this document, uh, but it's a it's um very good reading, very good information. I don't know if it's on uh, their website, but I'll just give you a little bit of uh, I have the document. And it's called the Redemption in the Book of Ruth, and it 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 um gives some information in the first pages about uh those characters 
uh, people that are in the book of Ruth uh, called Elimelech, e Elimelech, Naomi, who was um, Ruth's mother-in-law, Malon, who was uh, Naomi's son, Chilean, another son, Opa, Ruth, and Boaz, who we know that um, Yahshua came through that lineage. Uh, then it has kinsmen and Obed. And it also goes in to show the meaning of these names. I'd just like to share a little bit about it. Um, may I ask, does anyone have this document? I know I don't. I'm not sure if David does or not. Not to put David on the spot, which I just did. Okay. I'm looking to see if I can find it on the Lansing site for you, Sybil. Thank you. I have it. Uh, I just wanted to know if anyone else had it. But you can you can look for it, David. Thank you. And while he's getting that, um, I just go uh, begin with. Well, I thought I would be able to share it, but um, unfortunately, my excuse me, uh, Sybil, I did find, I believe. Um, no, nope, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm still looking. I thought I found it and I didn't. I apologize. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I thought that I had I had found the document, but I don't believe I did. So I apologize for the interruption. If, if you want to work with what you have, Sybil, by all means. Okay. Um, my, I thought I, I, I think my, okay, I'll try to read what I have, trying to, Okay, just give me a minute. Okay, the lighting is better. Uh, the definition uh, that he has in this document about Elimelech, it says, my El is king. And the, re it represents Yahweh Elohim, the ruler of heaven and earth, and the original pattern. And he uh, references Acts the 17th chapter, verse 24, says, like Adam, the ruler of fowl and fish and the first father, he died upon moving out from his original place in the kingdom to work for food for his family. His name, his family, and the land he possesses depends upon a miraculous resurrection of a new life from his dead son. Yahweh accomplishes this by redemption. Now that's the uh, information on Elimelech. Again, I'm reading a document that was done by Dr. Terry Walsh called The Redemption in the Book of Ruth. Naomi, my pleasantness joy of Yahweh, Elimelech's wife, represents the angels or creature whom Yahweh loved like Eve whom Adam loved. She became Mara, which is bitter, Miriam and Mary, and seemed doomed to forever lose her first estate, die and become extinct or consumed with no continuing life or children. By redemption, she and Ruth will be saved in childbearing since they continued in faith and love. And he references 1 Timothy 2.15. Malon, who was Naomi's son, means great infirmity, sick or mild, 
represents the earthly Jew, spiritually dead under curse or poverty inherited from his father, like Abel and Seth who died. Yet through his line, Yahweh would bring in the savior. He would take, he would take away the curse and be a blessing, giving him continued life, the bloodline, and secure the land of his inheritance for his posterity by redemption. And he re references Romans 7 and 4. That is just a few um, uh, uh, the definitions of those names in the book of Ruth or the redemption of the book of, in the book of Ruth that I've shared with you again. There are other names that I mentioned earlier that he goes in to give the definition. I don't know if David has found it, but I have to stop reading. But um, you, David, um, if you can um, find it, let us know if you did. And if it is on his website, I suggest uh, that you, that you brethren, uh, try to get it because it has lots of information in it and it's very good because we're looking at, even though we see it in type and shadow, we know that it is talking about Yahshua redeeming our souls. That's the true reality. Yahshua redeeming our souls or who have already redeemed our soul. So we're thankful that we know that the gospel of the kingdom of Yahshua is truly, when it is preaching truth and sincerity, it is able to do the job. All praises go to Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Sybil. Uh, David did pop the link into the chat as well, and Sarah popped in the uh, the site to go pull up the Lansing blog. So it's showing briefly on the screen at the moment, but the link is out there, and I can send it out to everyone on this call as well if that helps. And with that, uh, thanks thank for you very much. Thank you. Peace and Yashua. It's my pleasure to call upon our next speaker, uh, Dr. Janine Whitfield, if you're able. Good morning, brethren. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. Good morning. Wow. Well, I'm glad to be here always and um, to have another opportunity to also testify to the greatness and the goodness of what we have come to. And, um, you know, it, it's um, the reality of this gospel is... Uh, upon us and um we are at a point where the sons are going through the fire and we are being tried and we are being made uh stronger in the spirit which are the attributes I was thinking about that the other day um, because we are searching the deep things of Yahweh. And what I mean by that is not <clears throat> it's not a situation where you know we're we're getting all sophisticated and all that kind of thing. No, it's not that. It is that when your mind is on Yahweh, um, he takes you. Uh, deeper into understanding how, choosing my words very carefully, how he is manifested in you. And it's sometimes painful as we go through this period, this process of uh, fire and trial. Um, but we are being prepared. And it's important to see the beauty in that and to see always that glimpse of that light that is forever there 
even though you may be in the midst of chaos. Now, Yahshua said that in the world, we would have tribulation. Um, and so w up until this point, everything that we have been taught, and I notice how the speakers, previous speakers have emphasized, you know, when, when, it, when it is taught in truth and righteousness, because that's very important. It's important because we know that from all of the witnesses in the world, in the physical body, we know that all those two mysteries do run neck and neck. We have to always keep that in mind and also remember that there's, um, there's great lessons in seeing those two mysteries running neck and neck. For example, in your physical body, you know, or we know and have learned that we have both a sympathetic nervous system and a parasympathetic nervous system performing opposite functions, but bringing about a desired result. We know that in order to get light, we need both that negative and that positive charge in order to bring about a desired result. We know that when we're washing clothes in the washing machine, that process of getting clothes clean is called agitated. This, these are principles that help us to think differently about the way in which we might be experiencing what feels very painful, hardships, um, you know, family struggles. Uh, the satanic spirit literally incarnating in family members and you seeing a type of love truly growing cold or you seeing a whole change and you know you're being uh tested on how to stand and how to and, and experience all of these different things that you know may cause you to think that Yahweh is not with you that Yahshua is not in you and that's just not true so i want i preface you know kind of like the discourse to just say that it's important for us to recognize where we are and we know i know from the last few classes that i have had the pleasure of attending um this is the line that we're running this is the thread right now um and so knowing that the wickedness is becoming more wicked we have to look at what Yahweh is causing us. Because the, the, the thing about it is, is that we're not um, pathetic or weak. No, no, no. We are strong and powerful in Yahweh, but the anointed cherub, he covers, he, he shields, he hides, he, or he disguises. And it becomes hard sometimes for us to see what is really in us. I want you to put up the, um, let's just go back now just for the sake of, you know, trying to put things into, you know, a, 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 a better context. This teaching was founded by Dr. Henry Cook. Clifford Kinley, who declared that he had a divine vision and revelation straight from the creator, and he said, make me prove it. Now, he has done that. And along with this proof that we have, we come to understand who our creator really is, if you could get the, um, I'm sorry, the Moses chart. And we understand that Yahweh is pure spirit. And in order for us to understand anything about this pure abstract state and condition, he has to condescend or he has to take on a lesser uh, aspect of that awesome great spirit into a shape and a form that can then be seen only by visions and revelations known as Yahweh Elohim. Now this is in John 1 and 1. Let's get that. 
And while they're getting that, we're going to see how the whole process is set up with this threefold pattern that demonstrates the unity of the spirit. This is part of what Dr. Kinley brought. He taught us with Yahweh stepping into that body, taking over that body. And I don't know why people think that's such a, a trip. <laughs> I mean, or that's such a hard thing. Um, and and so all of a sudden, this 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 concept of Yahweh stepping into a body, picking up a body and laying a body down. I mean, it it makes sense. He created the creation. So it would make sense that, you know, with Dr. Kinley, he would step in there and give him a vision in one fell swoop, just give it all to him. Well, as much as we need to take us on to the next stage. He can do that. He is the creator. So let's not shortchange him based on our own uh, limited uh, way of, of seeing and understanding. So he takes on a body, picks up a body and lays it down. And so demonstrating the unity of the spirit. So he first exists in pure spirit. Let's get John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. Okay, pause. In the beginning was not Yahweh. Okay, there is no beginning for Yahweh. There is no end for Yahweh. In the beginning was the word. And in the in the word is Yahweh in shape and form. That's what's in the beginning. We have to be very clear about that. So it's Yahweh Elohim in that shape and form. That's what the beginning is. That's what Proverbs 8 and 22 is talking about. Go ahead and read. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Now, because uh, all things were made by Yahweh, see, because Elohim is Yahweh. Elohim is Yahweh in that particular state and condition. It's so important to recognize and understand the state and conditions in which the creator is functioning and operating in. And the best example, I use it all the time because it's just so crystal clear. The best example of understanding that unity of the spirit and the conditions of various aspects of the unity of the spirit comes in the form of H2O. Now, um, you know, steam is very hot. And it's it, it it it's in it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Steam or or it's 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 in the air. It's everywhere. You can't see it. You can't grasp it. You can't catch hold of it. So, but then when you cool steam down, it becomes a liquid form. Now, in that liquid form, it's not doing exactly the same thing as it does in that gaseous or that steam state. So now it's in this form. And it has rules that it must uh, follow, if you can understand what I'm saying, even though it is still that component or that, that steam, that element, that, that, that process, that H2O, that element is still there. But it has rules to follow. And then it cools down even further. That's why I always describe Yahweh Elohim as a condensation. It's a cooling down because he's a consuming fire. So now we look at Yahweh Elohim in Yahshua the Messiah in a vessel, in a vehicle, as a conduit, if you will, or in this form made like it unto us, like a man, like just a man walking the face of the earth. And that's what happens when you cool uh, liquid down even further and it freezes this ice at, I believe, 33 and a half, if I'm not mistaken which was the, the, is that right? 32 and a half, 33, somewhere in there. But, you know, there's nothing um, haphazard in Yahweh's purpose and his plan. There's a reason why ice freezes at 33 and a half or 32 and a half. Um, so the point is, is now Yahshua the Messiah is in a physical body and he's bound by certain laws. You know what I'm saying? In other words, he obviously is Yahweh in a body and can do all kinds of miraculous miracles and things like that. But when I say he's bound by the laws of the flesh in gravity and so forth and so on, 
feeling the pain, the infirmities, understanding he came down in a in a, in a physical body, not as Joshua did under the law, but through the loins of the Virgin Mary, meaning he had to suck paps, meaning he had to work. He was a carpenter. He had friends. You know what I'm saying? He had a whole life because he is coming in the likeness of sinful flesh and he is bound by the rules of that flesh, if, I, if you will. So feeling, being up there and whipped and dying the death of an outcast dog and all of that, he felt it. Why am I saying this? Because there's nothing that any one of us is going through that Yahweh, through his son, Yahshua Messiah, is not aware of, is not acquainted with. So therefore, the little suffering that we do, because he did redeem us, if you're not going through something, if you're not suffering, you probably want to check yourself. Because that's what time it is right now. Because Yahweh is so very apparent that he is bringing this all back unto one. I want you to get that in. I believe it is in Ephesians where he says the purpose is to um, is to bring all back unto uh, I can't quote it. <laughs> Ephesians 1 and 9. Thank you. Can you read that and please pick up a train of thought? This weapon, yeah. mm -hmm. I have it. Great. Having made known unto us the mysteries of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Pause for a second. So, you know, when you're reading the scriptures, you know, one of the things that's happened to me too, uh, I want us to, us to think about how Yahweh is causing us to unfold and evolve. It's a beautiful thing to see how in these processes, for example, of suffering, that he, that settles you. As it says in Hebrews, you suffer for a little while, it'll settle you or whichever scripture it's in, and it'll make you stronger. That's what's happening. And, you know, we're not, oh, we're not always accustomed to this kind of, uh, of um, uh, this, this particular process because we come out of the world. And in the world, it's a, a totally selfish kind of a, a real ugly way of being where you're separated. You know, it's like me, my, your ego. You know, it's always about what I'm going to do for me and so forth. But what we see happening with Yahweh as he is working with us is that you go through these things, but you can't forget how you come out on the other side where you're stronger and you're better. And you look back and you say, wow. And or sometimes you're in conversation with somebody and the conversation just flows like butter and you can't quite understand or you, you, you look at it, you're a participant in it. But what you're really seeing is that spirit in you doing the work and being that new creature in you. That is a beautiful thing. So I don't want us to forget that as we go through all of our, you know, our, our suffering and so forth. We have to be able to see the beauty and the, the magic of what Yahweh is causing to happen in us. All right, let's go back now to Ephesians where you were reading and start uh, from where you were reading, please. Uh, Ephesians 1. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> around, I got it. <clears throat> Ephesians okay. 1 and 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Pause. Pause. We're going to break this down. We're going to take our time. So now he says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Wow. He made that known unto us. The mystery of his will. Don't you know whether people really know it or not? They do want to know, right? But he made it known to us. He revealed it to babes. Go ahead and read. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time. Pause. I want you to go back. No, I, I'm going to read it because I'm going to break it down a little bit. Okay. So just, I've got it here. Having okay. made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure. We got to think about that. It's not our pleasure. It's, it's his pleasure, and he say it's his good pleasure. That's powerful. He made known unto us his will according to his good pleasure, and he purposed it in himself. 
What is that about? The scriptures have to be broke down, and this is this is how we go deeper. This is what I was talking about. Really taking the time to understand what's being said here. And then in the 10th verse, he says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one. He's gathering this together in one, all things in the Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. All coming back into the oneness. That's the, that's the beauty of what we can feel when we see how he's working with us and how he's changing us and how he shows us you're connected to me i got you this is the fill this is the real fill of progenitiveness to see the love of what he is doing and causing to be in us preparing us to be in that body now we're already in the kingdom don't misunderstand we're in the kingdom but once we get in the kingdom, there's work that's being done for us. And we just need to remain open and trust, having that faith, really having that faith, that kind of faith that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had going into that fiery furnace, knowing that they could die and, you know, as they're still breathing and, and having that kind of confidence. Or that love that the previous speaker was talking about that Ruth had for Naomi, where you go, I go. Your people will be my people. Yahweh demonstrating that profound love in the scriptures for us. But then we've got to be able to see how he's demonstrating that profound love in the interactions that we are having with him. And the world is the play, play, playground by which we're, 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 we're learning and growing. That's, that's how we really kind of come out of the world. We, we, it's the way we perceive it now. It's nothing more than what is being used to bring us and to teach us more about who our creator is. The last thing I want to just um, point out is that um, I, I've been thinking too about how Yahweh is cleaning us up. And sometimes the way in which he's cleaning us up is not, we're not even aware that we have these um, things in us, you know, and, and, and I had this analogy that Yahweh showed me is like, you think about a pillowcase and you wash it and it's nice and clean. But if you turn it inside out and you look in those corners, We'll see things that you just see like here. It's like all kinds of dirt and dust monkeys and all kinds of things in the cracks and the crevices of that pillowcase. But on the outside, you flip it back over, it looks like it's clean. Now I'm I'm sharing that to say that's just how thorough our creator is. We don't know how deep these things are rooted in us just because we've come into this teaching and just because we've sat under the teaching for years. We don't know how deep certain um, uh, worldly traits or satanic traits are still, um, you know, laying or, or, or are, are still in us, if I could put it that way. Like, for example... Go back just for one minute to the A or Asher A or chart, chart, because we have to remember the devil is subtle and he's slick, and he's going to use those things that you are most familiar with, that you love the most, that you um, th that are important to you. He ain't coming at you with the same old thing that you know we was. Before we became sons, he's not coming at you like that no more. So we'll, we'll, that doubt and what the satanic spirit does, I cannot uh, see it. But, um, you know, he's a man of sin. He's an accuser of the brethren. Uh, you know, the way we can sometimes be offended at things that um, could really be to our benefit. But uh, we choose rather to be offended. Um, and I'll give you an example of one of the little nasty dust monkeys that was in my pillowcase. 
it had to do with this kind of like, you know, you have this kind of um, competitive edge. You can be, you know, the world teaches us to be competitive. This is what I mean. I'm talking about these principles. And, you know, it's good to compete and blah, blah, blah. And, and so that when someone does something um, a little bit better than you, you know, instead of you maybe digging deeper to see if they're just better, you might get offended instead. And, and, and so it's all of those kinds of things. I'm just trying to bring it really home so that we can see. I'm not talking about the obvious things. I'm talking about the things that make us even sometimes in these schools where we're ineffective because we're still busy being offended and those kinds of things, okay? So I just wanted to put that out there, probably a, more of a personal testimony, but look, this is where I am and I'm at the point now where I am getting over myself. I make no excuses and complaints. It's just what it is. The Holy Spirit is giving me the utterance. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that. And I'm thankful of that. And I'm humbled by that. And with that, I'll say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for your discourse and testimony. So we will actually have uh, uh, two more speakers. So for next speaker, if I can call upon Nick Lattimore from Perrysburg, New York. Good afternoon, everyone. Evening, morning, all the good stuff. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to be called into this great, great school and to testify of anything about how Yahweh really is and actually exists. We are such a small number in comparison to the the people out there in this in this creation there's some eight billion people in the world right now and whenever we have functions together around the states and whatnot you know our average number is about 200 people 150 or 200 people um so we are truly the smaller of of it sir you can head to the camera for me yes i am okay it's just like um back here under this uh end of this age of the noah um in noah and the flood here and noah was called um and he found grace in the eyes of yahweh because the world was evil continually we can get that scripture if anybody needs it um and but he found grace El or elohim found grace in no i'm sorry noah found grace in the eyes of elohim and he gave him this vision, this great stupendous vision back here that he was going to flood the earth and he was going to end of all flesh as become before him. And Noah was commissioned to preach to the end, to all, the four corners of the earth. And so our, this, and that's our um, Matthew 24 chapter is, you know, this is going to be preached throughout all the age or all the, all the world. Um, so you'll see here, if you can zoom in at all on this, I don't know if we can actually zoom in enough, but on this chart here, you'll see that there's, the blood is on these guys' heads here, or these people's heads here, and this is Noah here, and he's preaching the truth, thus saith Yahweh. So the blood is off of Noah's head, and it's on their heads, because he preached the truth according to witnesses. And... Um, if we could get that verse for we're, we're, we're so compassed with so great a cloud of witness. Um, and I'm asking Benjamin, I'm going to need you to help me out here, okay? Because if mine's all, all on here, yeah. she got everything. We got Hebrews everything. 12. Yep. Thank you, everyone. And this yep. is definitely collaboration here together. I'm going to move this and maybe come back to this. Yep. Do you want Hebrews 12 and 1 right now? I got it, Nick. That'd be great. Man. Perfect. Yeah. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we are, we are. Sorry, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, mm -hmm. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. All right, All right. So let's hold right there. So there's a bunch in there. Um, and patience and long suffering, you know, patience goes hand in hand with long suffering. 
Um, but we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. And quite frankly, that right there is um, what sets us apart from every other organization in the entire universe, the whole entire world, is witnesses. Witnesses, witnesses. Can I get Thessalonians about proof too? First Thessalonians 521. Prove all things. Hold fast you that which is up one verse. I'm sorry, go to five and twenty. Despise not prophecy. Uh -huh. Prove all things. Oh, maybe two verses. I'm sorry. I'll go to 18. And sorry. everything give thanks. For this is the will of Yahweh in the Yahshua the Messiah concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Quench not, not the spirit. Go ahead. Despise not prophecy. No, so there's lots of. Keep going. I'm sorry. Prove all things. Prove. Hold fast that which is good. So witnesses. How do you prove things through witnesses? Through witnesses. And so, um, one of the things, and Dr. Underwood's been pushing this a lot in his lectures, and you see it all through Doc Kinley did it and whatnot. And our mission here is to identify Yahweh, to um, and, uh, help me out here, identify. Um, point out, and oh boy, I'm having rain for now. <laughs> just right detect, there. identify, yeah, the, and prove. Detect, identify, and prove the existence of Yahweh. And how do we do that? It's through witnesses. And Dr. Kinley comes down and says, um, I had a great vision directly from our creator, and he said, make me prove it. And he said, if I can't prove it, then I'm another liar like the rest of them. So, and he went about to go about to show show that and to show and um, what we have in this school is we teach by the names, which is Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, and Yahshua. We teach by this divine pattern of the universe, which Yahweh gave to Moses in this in this vision up on top of Mount Sinai. Okay, and this pattern was the tabernacle. And we, we can go into that. We can take notes that I need to get into these scriptures. But he gave him this pattern. He was told to make everything according to the pattern that he was shown in the month. So we have the name, we have the pattern, and we have fulfillment. So out there um, in the world, they say that this Joshua, the world calls Jesus, came in to institute a Christian way of life. And this school says that he came in to fulfill the old law. Now, it's not this school that says that. That's what the book says. And we can get that in Colossians. We can get that Corinthians, Hebrew, Hebrews 8, Corinthians, um, Galatians, Romans 8. There's scripture all over the place proving to show that this man came in to fulfill a physical way of ordinance, a, 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 a physical way of, of worship, and to nail it to his cross, and then to pour out his spirit on the day of Pentecost into the hearts and minds of them that Yahweh had given him. And now, it's our commission to spread this. Um, through witnesses, and our witnesses are the law and the prophets. Our witnesses, if we get Romans 1, 19 and 20, is the physical. Um, one of the basic things that we've taught in this school is we weren't, when we came into this school, we weren't, we were given five basic senses. It was sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing, right? And we don't have spirit detectors. So I'll talk about that years ago. Get that verse we got. You got that for us, Ben? Yeah, Romans 1 and 19. Okay. Because that which may be known of Yahweh. Is okay, don't forget right there. there. See, now, that's something that I read over very a lot in my younger in class, is that which may be known of Yahweh. There's, that's two ways you take that. One, wow, you can actually know something about Yahweh. Okay? But there's also things you're not going to know about Yahweh. Okay? Continue on, bud. That which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Mm -hmm. And the, the, them at that time, they're talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. But to them, it's all of us. Manifest right within us because we're all built in the image and likeness of Yahweh. Go ahead. For Yahweh hath shown it unto them. Mm -hmm. 
for the invisible things of him, the invisible things of Yahweh. Now that is that is in essence Yahweh, pure spirit. We do not have spirit detectors, so we need the physical to understand anything about the spiritual. And that's what Ben is about to read there. From the creation of the world are clearly seen. Uh, so you'll see here on this chart alone, and the, and the moderation says that we have Yahweh is pure spirit and the, the cloud symbolizing eternity. So this is a type and shadow or symbol of spirit. We have no way of drawing spirit. This closest thing that we can come with in this physical creation is a cloud or um, uh, when water condenses from liquid into uh, a vapor and to show forth that cloud. So that which may be known of Yahweh is shown within them. And now this, this cloud is all around the edges of this chart. Now everything on this chart is all physical things. These are actual, this is the physical River Jordan or the physical Red Sea, the physical wilderness of Sinai, Canaan's land, um, you know, different Egypt. These are all physical things, but they're all surrounded in spirit. And you also notice, um, I guess this is just as good here, is this is Yahweh Elohim, and, you'll, and this is the creation coming down here, and you'll see this is the first day of creation. And this here, this heart up here and coming down, this is like pure spirit up here. I know it's hard to see, but we have other charts, and I'm trying my hardest on our chart. But this heart here is Yahweh, pure spirit, coming on down, or how Dr. Kinley stated it, is this is the amalgamation and conglomeration of pure spirit into physical. Okay, so this is where we're going to get to know anything about how Yahweh is, is through this physical creation. And he gave Moses this, this tabernacle by which all things are made back here. And just as simple as it comes, is like the moderation says, is there the most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. And if we look into the creation, we're going to find that an atom goes by that way, a cell goes by that way. Um, you have a... a, a a nucleus, a nucleolus, and a cell body. You have a proton, a neutron, and an electron. Your earth is across the core of mantle. Um, you have three types of rocks. Your body is a head cavity, a chest cavity, and a bottom cavity. You have three main utensils whenever you're eating dinner. Um, water is in three manifestations. Um, you have the, 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 the solid concrete. Um, you have the intermediate, which is liquid, and then you have the vapor, which is like in your spirit. So all of these things have been given to us so that we can learn something about Yahweh. So these are our witnesses, and this is the difference that sets us apart from every other organization out there in the world. Um, we're not going to sit here and try and teach morals or how you should be, because if you have the spirit form in you, that form that, that spirit will 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 guide you in the right directions. Um so. Uh, one of the things that's really, I got a lot of things going on in my mind because, um, you know, the personal testimony, something that's been going through my mind lately, is um, Doc Kinley said, come to class, be on time, you ought to love the brethren. And the word ought is, actually, let's just look it up, let's get the definition of ought, if we could do that for us. And um, Oftentimes, people think there's something nice to do or something you should do. And that's not the definition of ought. It's, it's one is used to indicate duty or correctness. Mm, duty Typic or correctness. Go ahead. Typically, when criticizing someone's actions. Okay. Two, used to indicate something that is probable. Um, That five minutes should be enough time. That that's what it said. I'm I'm look. That's all I have right now. I'm looking. Used to indicate duty or correctness. You, you ought, it's your duty. It's your duty. It's correct to love the brother. Used to express obligation, mm -hmm. advisability, natural expectation, or logical consequence. Okay, so. If you have that spirit formed in you, you are going to love the brother. And you're going to recognize that spirit in your brothers and sisters out there. Um, whew, if we could get, uh, let's go to the scripture lesson. Because I, I, you know, I, I got, I'm all over the place here. Let me, I do want the scripture lesson, but get back to where I was there. Is 
to come to class the other time at Otto and Bruno, that's where I was at. So um, this is to come to, back when Dr. Kelly was teaching these things, you know, this was well before any of the technology we have. Quite frankly, back in the 70s, you know, we, uh, a landline was the best communication we had. And quite frankly, back then, there was an awful lot of letters being written. And he set up the schools at 120 minutes a, a section, and he set them up for three days a week. And the physical showing forth the spiritual of that is 120 minutes showing forth the 120 years that Noah preached back here, back, back here, 120 years that Noah preached back here. And the three days a week is a type of three meals because this is a spiritual, this is a communion, this is a, um, uh, a supper right here. We are sitting here and supping one with another of Yahshua and, 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 and eating of spiritual things here. Um, so Doc said, you know, you're going to eat three meals physically in a day and you need to, um, you, to, to sustain a, a, a a healthy body you need three meals a day and i understand these days in in this age and you can see the physical show of work the spiritual and in this day and age you will see a lot of people for one are having a tough time to find a substantial meal it's it's very hard to find um food that is actually good for the physical body you find an awful lot of food that has um supplements in it um they're enriched uh they and then in, or, or they're added with um, dyes and just different things that aren't really healthy for the body. So you'll find the same in the spiritual out there, in the world out there, and people are out there teaching lies. The food is not, the, the spiritual food is not good, you know, and the physical food is not good. Um, so you'll find that a lot of people are eating one big meal a day and snacking throughout the days on different nuts and grains and things that are good and healthy to eat as opposed to, you know, trying not to eat the, the, um, the bad things that are so readily available. Um, so quite frankly, I look at the gospel, how the gospel is being preached these days, where we do have these classes that um, you got to come to, you have to. And all of these, the, 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 the Zoom classes and the meetings, and I mean, we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. You can pick up your device these days, your phone, your laptop, anything and listen to any class from anywhere in the country throughout the week. I mean, there are so many classes that you can listen to. You could practically not do anything else but listen to class if you wanted to. Um, so those are like, but you're, it's in your ears. And like Ben said in the prayer, you're, you're, you're distracted by other things. I personally, I like to listen to, listen to the earbuds while I'm mowing lawns. I mow a lot of lawns and it gives me an opportunity to just focus on that. But I'm still doing something else. And in the event that something happens while my job is going on, I am distracted and I'm not paying attention to what is going on in class. So here is this physical class that Dr. Kinley set up for us to come to and eat a meal and be full and feel good and take it with you and be able to digest it and process it. And somebody mentioned, I think it might have been Lila last week, um, mentioned about how it's so easy to eat up what's going on out there in the world and just gorge yourself and not really understand what you did and then it takes that you can eat so fast but it takes a very long time in comparison to digest and that digestion is the part it's the separation we can get into that into the physical uh, you know how, how food goes through the body and is it is excreted and whatnot there's major principles there's all through your element book um but so we come to class and this is where we can sit and have a good meal so my encouragement there is if you are capable if yahweh has given you the finances if yahweh has given you the vehicle if yahweh has given you the time off seek yahweh while he may be found and come and sup with the brethren and sit and commune and enjoy class before and after you know this is great what we do but you know it happens there's interruptions and you wish you could just talk and gather and whatnot and it just it's 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 just a little supplement it's just a little a little bit to eat eat up while we're sitting here in this particular format so um i am grateful for this format because um it's such a uh, uh, what's the word a famine in the world out there that we do have these supplements out there. 
and take advantage of every single one of these, especially if you don't have the opportunity to physically get to class because you can't live on supplements. And, and Yahweh is a, is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's, I'm quoting Bible verses here, so if there's any questions, we can get into it. Um, that is one thing that we strive to in this school is this school is not about theories, concepts, or opinions. This school is not about a man. This school is not about any particular person, dean, teacher, or anyone. This school is all about, thus saith Yahweh, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom he has sent, in the outpouring of his Holy Spirit, and to prove all things according to the scriptures. And any time, whether it is in your physical life, which is going on out, out there in the world, or in this school, is we can look to the spiritual to show forth the physical. Or I'm sorry, and, and vice versa, and vice versa. So the whole entire law and what these children of Israel, how much time do I got? A minute or two? I got some time ago. You got about uh, eight minutes or so. Perfect. All right. That's good enough. So now, can we get where it is where the law was our schoolmaster? And now the children of Israel, I'm going to go through this. And it's all Galatians 3.24. All right. Let's get that real quick. Revelation 3. Revelation. Okay. Galatians 3 and 24. Wherefore? The ceremonial law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto the Messiah, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, that's good. Know, I think I think that's good. But that ceremonial law, or that law that was given to Moses back here from the mountain, was a schoolmaster unto us, so we can learn something from this. So all of those physical 613 ordinances, laws, and ordinances were given are now our schoolmaster. So if you want to learn about how to live um, a physical life glorifying Yahweh, you go back to that because you'll find that's all about glorifying Yahweh. I'm going to give a real, real brief testimony. Now, the children of Israel, they were given a promise. I'm going to go over here real quick, sir, okay? Children of Israel given Abraham was given a promise that the seed what will come through him, and that they were going to go down into a land they know not of, and there was going to be a famine in the land. Okay, so this was a physical famine. There was no food, nothing to eat, and long and short of it, they went down, and they had to spend four hundred years down here in bondage under the Egyptian, under the rule of the Egyptians. Okay, so that's what this migratory pattern is. What this is about here. I'm going to jump over this chart back over here, though, sir. So this is the exact same depiction of what was on what is the elementary chart or the pattern of plan of Yahshua. Um, but this is the same plate right here. This is the migratory pattern. And now these children of Israel were down here because of the, uh, they were sent down here because of a famine in the land. And they were slaves. And they were enslaved to the Egyptian rule. And under that Egyptian rule, we can look at our history books and you will find that how the Egyptians ruled. You can go over there right now and still see how they ruled. Um, with their pyramids um, and how they worship, well, you know, and they were a, a, a god for every single thing out there. Um, now the children of Israel were set apart from the Egyptians, but they were subject to that, and they were down in that land, and they were they were made known to understand the the worship of the Egyptians back here. Now through promise, Moses. Um, I'm not going to get all into it. Moses was was down here in Egypt, killed a man, had to flee, comes up in here, and he is a shepherd uh, tending the flock of, uh, of his father-in-law. And while he's out there, he gets a, a vision in a burning bush, a vision, a vision from Yahweh. This is something that if you were standing next to him, you wouldn't see. This was for Moses, Moses alone. He got a vision, and Yahweh came to him and gave him instruction. And the main instruction he gave him right there is, it's, this is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. So that at that time, he gets a name. And by that name and that name alone, he sends Moses down in Egypt, the most powerful uh, um, people in the world at that time, and goes down and says, let my people go. He didn't go there with armies and guns and chariots or anything along those lines. He went only with the name of Yahweh. And this is to show forth the power in the name of Yahshua, in the name of Yahweh. And you will see power right here. It's, Yahweh is power. 
So he comes down with a name, and um, you can read all through Exodus. There was 10 devastating plagues here. Each one of those devastating plagues was showing forth an Egyptian deity and how Yahweh, with the power of a name, knocked down every single one of those deities. Not only knocked them down, but utterly destroyed them. So there was a death there, they, and then uh, at the end of that, they had the, the death of the lamb, and that lamb had to be in them, okay? So that lamb was their salvation, this lamb without spot and blemish. So they had that lamb in them. There was a death of the lamb. Then and they had to be come up through the Red Sea, the divided waters of the Red Sea. Now, Yahweh divided those waters of the Red Sea. They had to come up through there with the lamb in them. So you have death. Burial and they resurrect on the wilderness of Sinai. And now to get into it, now when they come up into the wilderness of Sinai, here they are, they are provided with manna, they are provided with quail, they are provided with their shoes don't wear out, their clothes don't wear out. These are all physical things showing forth spiritual things. And the, the spiritual principle here is is all of those things happen for them as long as they kept their eye on Yahshua. Now, if we could get um Matthew six and thirty-three. And if we could get, um, do, do I have a scripture sitting there waiting for me? Yeah. Okay. And Numbers 21 and 8. Matthew 6 and 33. Yeah. But seek ye first the kingdom back of God. Up, I'm sorry. I'm back it up. 31. 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Mm -hmm. uh, Pause for a second. Here. This is under, this is Yahshua speaking here. Okay, in the New Testament, well, in the so-called New Testament part of your book, this is under the old law because it's not the he did not go to the cross yet. But recap that verse there. Real quick. Therefore, take no thought, saying, "What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed?" And you'll find back here in the children of Israel, they were murmuring back here all the time. What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? You bring us out here to die. Was there not enough graves under? They were continuously murmuring. But you'll find there if you could get uh, continue there and have that ready for me. Ben, yeah, I, was, hold on one second. For after all these things, do the Gentiles seek? Mm -hmm. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Mm -hmm. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and His righteousness, mm -hmm. and all these things shall be added unto you. If you seek first Yahweh and you keep your eyes on the prize, He will provide all of these things for you. Now that's on a, in, in the so-called New Testament. If we get that numbers are bad. Numbers 21 and 8. Um, yeah, but back up to uh, like, I don't know, 6 or something. Right. Numbers 21 and 6. Uh -huh. And Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people. And I'm they, sorry, no, back it up. Um, no, back up to uh, 3. Numbers 21 and 3. And Yahweh har hearkened unto the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites. And they utterly destroyed them mm -hmm. in their cities. Mm -hmm. And he called of the name of the place Hormat. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And, and the, they're, 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 because Yahweh sent them away that they didn't want to go. <laughs> but Yahweh put them in a direction that wasn't according to them. And they thought they had a better idea. Go ahead. And the people sp spake against Elohim and against Moses. Uh -huh. Wherefore have ye brought us up on our, of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Yep. For there is no bread, neither is there any water, mm -hmm. and our soul loatheth with this vile bread. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people. And Yahweh was like, Are you kidding me? You know, I, I've already done no See, this is well after they've already witnessed all of these things that happened. Through, uh, this is you know well into their journey i'm not exactly sure how far but they've already had a great cloud of witnesses presented to them and they're still murmuring go ahead and they bit the people and much people of people of israel died mm -hmm. therefore the people came to moses and mm -hmm. said we have sinned for we have spoken against yahweh mm -hmm. and against thee mm -hmm. pray unto yahweh that he take away the serpents from us and moses prayed for the people and Yahweh said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, mm -hmm. and set it upon a pole. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that every one that is fitting, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Mm -hmm. So all they had to do was recognize their problem, and Yahweh took care of it. So 
Um, to sum it all up here is we need to focus on Yahweh in every single aspect of our life, not just when we come to class or not when you're just feeling down and out or up, up, or, or don't understand what's going on. It's more open book to yourself some learning. My ultimate point here is, is Doc Henley said come to class and be on time, three, three, three lectures, but class itself should be a 24 seven thing. Um, yeah, even when you're sleeping, because Yahweh put that breath of life right in you and you are praising Yahweh in every breath, whether you know it or not, but to recognize that you are a witness to him in every breath and class should be continuously in this gathering together of a physical classroom should be just your your rest, your break, your chance to get away from those fiery darts out there in the world, away from those serpents, away from those things, and come here and commune with the brethren, suck with the brethren, and give you that, which once again is just glorifying the name of Yahweh. So um, if, you're, if your focus is on anything in the world, if it is physical, if it is anything other than Yahshua, if it's your job, if it's school, if it's your truck, your car, if it's the beach, if it's, you know, you pretty much name anything. And if you're not seeing Yahshua tabernacle in that thing and seeing a witness or seeing Yahweh prove himself through this, um, well, then just keep talking to him. And don't forget that the carnal mind, we can pick this verse up. The carnal mind is at enmity with Yahweh. And Doc Kinley said we came in dead on arrival. So the world out there is carnal mind, and it is continuously at enmity with Yahweh. So when you're out there and you're dealing with these carnal minds, keep that in mind. And in everything, try and show them anything you can possibly show them about how Yahweh really is and actually exists. And if you can't just sort of show it, just do it in your nature. Just, just, and Yahshua will, will, will come through you, and, and, and his nature will come through you. So, um, and all those things, it's an honor and pleasure to, uh, if anybody got anything out of this whatsoever, it is all thanks and glory to, to Yahshua through Yahweh, and for us to have the opportunity to do this is like nothing else in this entire creation. So, with those few words, I thank you very much. Love you all. Thank you very much for your discourse. I'd like to call upon our next and final speaker, if able, David Underwood from Lansing, Michigan. Are you able to uh, give a testimony? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And, and, and David, if you wish, you could also present the charts if you like, or I can, whatever is easiest for you. Well, we're going to try something that I don't know if it's going to function or not function. Let me see here. All right, you can see a monitor in there. And can you see um, the Elohim book on the on the screen? Can you see the Elohim? Yeah. I, I can see it. Yes, but you can't read the words. All right. Well, that's my guide. You okay. guys can take notes. <clears throat> Nick had made mention about detect, identify, and prove. And when I finally had those words pointed out to me by Yahshua and started to see how Dr. Kinley, when he wrote, this four volume of the textbook, it gave a whole new perspective of what to teach and how to teach Yahshua the Messiah. And it isn't that anybody is not doing it correctly, it's that it's just a different emphasis. So we have that last sentence of the very first full paragraph on page one of volume one and it's entitled introduction and it's 
the whole sentence is, it is this panor simplified panoramic vision and revelation. You could also say it is this simplified divine panoramic vision and divine revelation of the divine pattern of the universe. Given to me, in other words, Yahweh gave to Dr. Kinley by Yahweh Elohim, which I ex have expounded upon through charts. And that's what we've been using in this Google Meets meeting is the charts and writings. In other words, those are the pamphlets. Those are the textbooks. Those have come to be transcripts of Dr. Kinley's lectures to my associates. And hopefully we, you will account yourself as being Dr. Kinley's associate, even though some of you have never met Dr. Kinley, which in turn has qualified them or you now to detect. And what should you be able to detect? Identify and prove. Well, first of all, when you come to understand and read through this first volume of the textbook, through the fourth, it is Dr. Kinley detecting and identifying and proving the existence of Yahweh for you, for me, for those who are reading the textbook, who are there sitting in the classrooms listening. Detecting, identifying, and proving. Now, if you took the opportunity to look up what the word detect means, it would be helpful for you to do that. Identity, identity. In other words, how do you identify someone? Well, normally we do it with a photo ID. Now, there wasn't something called photo ID. And then some states, they didn't have photo IDs. They just had a ID, you had your name, address, and some information. So, and prove. Now, we're going to show that we have a chart with a very long name that most of us, if we would learn the name of that chart, it would help us into understanding a little bit more about Yahweh's purpose and pattern and plan of salvation that's operating down through the ages and dispensations. That's that 40 plate chart. And it is called, it is a chart. It is a chart on the divine vision and divine revelation of. And matter of fact, let me just go ahead and see if I can pull it up. And it says, the divine pattern of the universe. And it is proving the existence of Yahweh. That's what this chart is doing. That's what all the charts are doing. That is what Dr. Kinley is doing in his writings called the textbook. And this divine pattern of the universe that is proving the existence of Yahweh is also manifesting his purpose, Yahweh's purpose by the physical creation. And it is through the ages and dispensations, and that's why we have Romans 1, 19 and 20, to take the natural, to understand the spiritual. That's why we begin at Moses and the prophets. This is why you should be able to see the ages and dispensations chart laid upon this 40 plate chart. And if you just call it the 40 plate chart and don't appreciate the full title of it, please start learning the whole title because it will help you. So we're looking at this textbook where we are going to detect and identify the existence and prove the existence of Yahweh. But you can also detect, identify, and prove the existence of that satanic mystery of iniquity. 
and we have a whole chart that we just finally call the Daniel chart. But there is a title. It's called Proving the Existence and Destruction of Satan and His Demons Through the Dispensations and Ages. So you should be able to detect, identify, and prove the existence of Yahweh. But you should also be able to detect, identify, and prove the existence and destruction of Satan and his demons as you did the existence of Yahweh through the ages and dispensations. So you should be able to take this, as we fondly call it, the Daniel chart and lay it right upon the ages and dispensations chart as well. You should be able to do that. So as we're looking at this statement, you also should be able to trace that mark of the beast from its origin, which is page 34 of the first volume of the textbook. Go look on page 34, starting on 31. That's that unity of the spirit that you see at the bottom of what the Lansing calls the name chart. But it is the, let me just go ahead and get it. It's this bottom portion. This is page 31 of the first volume of the textbook, that unity of the spirit. It's showing the unity of the spirit. So as you're looking at, let me get back there. You should be able to trace that mark of the beast from its origin to its final conclusion, the lake of fire, which is page 30, a page, plate 38, called eschatology. And you should be able to give the definition of eschatology, which is the study of end times or end things, such as what? Immortality. Death, heaven, hell. So as we move along in pointing out this detect, identify, and prove the existence of Yahweh, and when you read, take the time to do what is called control F on your computer in the first volume of the textbook. And then in the upper right-hand corner, There'll be a box that comes up, type in the word exist. And it's gonna bring up exist and existence. And it comes up about 83 different times and just bounce your way through each and every incident. So now if we go to page 27 of the first volume of the textbook under the section Yahweh is pure spirit or Yahweh is all in all, then we are getting to that first section and the accompanying illustrations, which are unity, part one, and eternity, pages 31 and 32. The author intends to do what? Show and prove the existence of Yahweh. And he goes on to explain Yahweh first existed in totality as pure spirit, pure principle. That is to say, Yahweh is the ultimate source, infinite immaculate substance, the incomprehensible and inscrutable principle, the all in all and eternal, independent, self-existing deity, without visible shape or form. And he gives his scriptures. And that he is within himself, the sum total embodiment of all of the attributes of intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge, love, beauty, and justice, foundation, power, and strength. He is the limits and bounds, the source and substance. Yahweh is the terminus ad quim and terminus ad quo. So when you look at the 40 plate chart, that's why you have 
in plate number two called theosophy, you see those attributes. And then those attributes come into a set shape and form as we call the Godhead. People don't like the title Godhead. They'll say supernal nature or Yahhead. But we see the attributes in a set fixed form. So as we're looking at that's Dr. Kinley. This is page 27. Then what he comes into next is Yahweh is super incorporeal form. And then he comes in Yahweh Elohim is manifested in physical form. And that comes into page 31 here. This is unity of the spirit. Yahweh our Elohim is Yahweh a unity. This is that bottom portion of the Lansing name chart and this is showing your spirit is one yahweh and it would be nice if we could put the attributes in there like we do on the moses chart because we do on the moses chart we go to the moses chart and we point out the attributes there in that cloud which is showing yahweh is spirit yahweh is pure spirit so as we are moving on, now we're going to go all the way on down to page 57. And this section of the first volume of the textbook, the divine pattern of the universe. And then this is where Dr. Kinley is going to go in. And he's going to have that series number two. He's going to have that 40-foot chart. He's going to have the 40-plate chart. He's going to have those illustrations. But he, we come down to that last sentence of that paragraph. These events as illustrated on the chart, series number two, reveals the identity and proves the existence of Yahweh, the mystery of iniquity, and the mark of the beast through the dispensations and ages. We're trying to get you to see how Dr. Kinley has laid out, detect, identify, and prove the existence of Yahweh, the satanic mystery of iniquity, and tracing that mark of the beast down through the ages and dispensations. And Dr. Kinley in this section says, Time and space will not permit every comparison and detail because he, Dr. Kinley, is going to compare all the 30 of, well, he actually goes through plate 13, which is the migratory pattern, to that first key plate, which is entitled the pattern that we see here in black and white. And he uses convention of A for the most holy place, B for that second veil, C for the holy place, D for the first veil or door, and E for the court round about. So he uses that convention. So when you are at plate 28, A, you know to look in the most holy place. Or if you said plate 28E, you know to look in the court round about. Or if you go 29C, now you know to go to the holy place. Now, in workshops, we go a little bit further in that we also color code. Because when we look at our name chart at the very top we have Yahweh that is symbolic in blue and then we have Elohim in purple and we see Yahshua in scarlet and we know that if you mix blue and scarlet together you're going to get that intermediary color called purple and then we see the uh tabernacle representations most holy places blue holy places purple and court roundabout is scarlet and again you have gas that steam is seen it's a veil and then you have the liquid and then you come down into solid so you have a color coding yahweh represented by blue 
white, purple representing Elohim, and scarlet representing Yash the Messiah. So it's only going to be a few limited examples that Dr. Kenley is going to use because in this section, he's going to compare plate number one and plate number 36, which is the unity of the spirit. Then he's going to take five plates to depict and illustrate Yahweh, who is spirit, or define Yahweh, which is spirit. And then he's going to do the chaosis or cosmogony and chaosis. And then he's going to do the first and second day and on through. But let me come down to the last sentence on page 67 of the section that's called the division between male and female and what we have this limited explanation so from page 57 all the way down to page 69 has been a limited explanation of the creation of the days of the six days of creation as seen in a vision by Moses. And that's what sometimes we do forget to stress that when you see or hear anything about the first day of creation, it is by seen by Moses in a vision. And that is now going to be compared to the threefold pattern of the tabernacle and it shows the operation of Yahweh. Given pattern. Used to do what? Have you heard the words detect, identify, and prove the existence of Yahweh, the mystery of iniquity, and the mark of the beast? Have you, have you seen, have I demonstrated how Dr. Kinley has been repetitious? in his teaching in this textbook. And then you can still bounce on over to volume four and read the very, and again, he goes in and he continues with plates that he has not used here in this section of the days of creation. And he goes on to have plate 15 and plate 16 and 17 and 18 and he's in there as we already know is that fourth volume is mystery of Yahweh mystery of iniquity and what the mark of the beast so Dr. Kinley has been trying to teach his associates how to detect identify and prove the existence of Yahweh that mystery of iniquity, and also trace that mark of the beast down through the ages and dispensations. So I'm hoping that if you were to take this to heart, it will give you that a little bit broader view, an umbrella view of what we are teaching and how we're teaching. Now, in Lansing, we like to see talk about we teach the name, we teach the pattern, and we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah. But we teach the name only in reference to detecting, identifying, and proving the existence of Yahweh. Because when you know the name, that's helping to identify. When you're looking at the mystery of iniquity, talking about Satan and his demons, Lucifer, that is helping you to identify that mystery of iniquity. It, hopefully that's making sense to you. Now, we had someone make a reference to, um, let me see, where did I go? I know I had it up earlier. Let me see if I can, there we go. We, we talked about scatter, scatter, how Yahweh has scattered his people. And this document that you see on your screen about scatter and gather. If you take the opportunity to go in and take those words, scatter, and run law, prophets, fulfillment, and spiritual reality, you will learn something a little bit more about how Yahweh scattered his people. And then take that word gather and how that Yahweh is going to gather all that is in heaven 
and all that is in earth back into him. Now, what does scatter mean in the American Heritage Dictionary? Well, first of all, to cause, to separate, and go in different directions. Well, we know at the flood, the people started going out to wherever they went, and then we get to that point where you have the Tower of Babel. And their goal and intent was not to be scattered upon all the earth. And Yahweh, when you read there in Genesis, came down and saw, hey, these are all of like-mindedness. Let's go down and confuse their tongues. And when that confusion of tongues took place, then all the theories, opinions, and imaginations that were there in um, that Babylon, that confusion, it was spread to the four corners of the earth. And then therefore, when we get into the 1500s and we had this era of explorers, uh, when the Roman Catholic priests were on these ships and when they went into India, they found the same principle of mother and son in India. And they said, well, don't you, you don't need to call them uh, by your Indian names, call them Mother Madonna and Jesus. And then when they went into China, the same thing. There's that principle of mother and son. Because you had that back there in Babylon with Semiramis and Tammuz. Now, what do we have is to distribute something loosely, strew it, to strew something over, like a surface. Third, to diffuse or deflect radiation and particles, to separate and go in different directions, the act of scattering or the condition of being scattered, something scattered. And you have synonyms, scatter, disperse, dissipate then let me see i haven't been to this doc, uh, document dispel this verb means to cause a mass or aggregate to separate and go in different directions and we dr kelly talked about a coring mass of, of an amalgamation well that's all in one lack of a better phrase, an amalgamation. But now it's going to have to separate and go into those different atoms and makeups. Scatter refers to loose or haphazard distribution of components. Disperse implies the complete breaking up of the mass or aggregate. Remember, there was Israel, all of one nation, and then Yahweh started to disperse them out to the Assyrians and Babylonians and to the other nations. And you will find that as we read through the law, prophets, and fulfillment of scatter, and then we'll find out the reality also, what that means, and also when we run the word gather. And so you go on through and you can read through the information. And it gives other, you know, going to different so sources and numbers of words, etc. So what we have under the word scatter, we have again in Genesis 11, 4, where we end up having the people, lest we be scattered abroad upon the whole face of the earth. And that's why they were building that tower. But it was also to make a name unto themselves. And from Thence did Yahweh scatter them abroad. When he came down and confused their tongue, they went into all these nations and the theories, opinions, and imaginations that they were believing went with them. And they just went in and had different names. Then when you get into Leviticus, and I will scatter you, that's Israel, among the heathen. And Deuteronomy 4.27, and Yahweh shall scatter you among the nation. That's the heathen. Deuteronomy 28, 62, and ye shall be left few in number. Thou wouldest not obey my voice of Yahweh thy Elohim, and Yahweh shall scatter thee among 
all people, that's all nation, among the Hebrews, um, the nations and the heathen, there thou shalt serve other Elohim. And Yahweh had told them, don't you worship any other El but me. So let me see what if I have anything. And then we have Deuteronomy 32, 26. And I said, I would scatter you to the four corners of the earth. All right. So that's a law, the scatter. Now, when you look at prophets, we have 1 Kings 14, 15. And shall scatter them beyond the river. That's going to be the um, tribes of Israel. Because they have made their sacred poles. And we know that Israel, when they had that divided kingdom, uh, none of the kings of Israel were good. They were from bad to very worst. They worshipped sacred poles. They had two of the um, serpents on a pole. They built two golden calves, etc. And then Nehemiah 1 and 8, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Then what's in the prophets, it can't be any different than what it was in the law. And then in Psalms, we have scattered them by thy power. Yahweh is, is, is them, Israel and Judah, being scattered by Yahweh's pattern. And you have to understand that Yahweh had the ability to set up kings of the Gentile nations and to take them down or overturn them from Assyria to a Babylon, to the Medes and the Persians, to the Grecians, to the Romans, from pagan Rome to Papa Rome, all the way on down to the Pope today. Five minutes. Five minutes. Gotcha. Okay. So. Again, only two or three witnesses. So now we have a fulfillment. We have Matthews 9.35, a scatter. And Yahweh went about teaching, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing the people. That's what a priest should do back under the law. But that's what Yahshua is doing now is teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing people. Our souls are now being healed. We're scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. And Yahweh speaks about that, which is probably down further under the prophets, how that you kill the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And that's what happened when Dr. Kenley died. A lot of people just left, quote unquote, the institute or left the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And some probably left after Robert Harris. And some people probably um, left after Aaron Bryant. And then there will probably be those when Keith Gilkey runs his course. But anyway, so smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. I will smelt the shepherd and the sheep shall, see, it just, just to repeat. So what do we have scattered? scatter what's important now is the gathering so let's see if we can get to the gather part and it talks about yashua being the good shepherd etc so let me get down and maybe we can here we go we should the documents on there the we go well, David. there you go i got gather so you we have then gather is to collect from different places and that's what yahweh did he scattered his people and now he's bringing them together we have our brethren in australia and malaysia and africa and the caribbean and other places in the earth that i have not been informed about we're being gathered into the body of yash the messiah and the spiritual reality of it now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our savior yashua messiah and by our gathering together unto him and that's what i call our sundry sunday morning meeting at seven o'clock gathering in yashua and then we talked about it in ephesians 1 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one that's yashua messiah all in heaven and all in earth in him. That's 
those souls and us and the angels that remained with him. And then you have Revelation, the 19th chapter. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice. And it goes on and saying, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great Elohim. So take that opportunity to research, gather, scatter and gather. Go law, prophets, fulfillment. That will also give you an understanding about how Yahweh has been working his purpose and pattern and plan of salvation down through the ages and dispensations. And it looks like I'm over time. Thank you, Lionel. Thank you very much. Peace and love, in Yashua. Um, we'll do some other announcements, discussions, or questions after the doxology. I did pop in the chat that there's the uh, North Texas Zoom class that takes place at uh, 3 Eastern time or 2 Central time, so basically uh, two hours from now for those that are able to attend that. And uh, next weekend is there's the Gates Picnic. Artport has a class on Thursday at 6.30 at the Maple City Inn, Best Western, I think it is. That's 6.30. Friday is a class 630 and Gates at the, uh, uh, if you need the site, I can certainly let you know. And then they're having class Syracuse at seven and seven o'clock on Saturday. And then a picnic uh, class at 11 o'clock at Menden Ponds at one of the halls there. The information can be sent out if you, if you wish it, just letting you know. So anyway, peace and love in the Astro. Thanks for joining from uh, Ghana as well and Zambia and all the brethren out there across the United States, Canada and the Bahamas. So thank you. Go ahead with the doxology, Nick, when able. All right. Just to reiterate, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We truly appreciate it. If we could all stand for the doxology, take it from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Stand your heart, mind, physically, whatever you possibly can. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and for all time. Let's all say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.